Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're gonna look into chapter 23 of A-level physics, capacitance. And this is the chapter outline. Well, a capacitor is an electrical component that stores charges and energy in a circuit. It consists of two conductive plates separated by an insulating material. But before we dive into the technical details of how they work, I do want to show you why do we need them. So the capacitors are needed because they provide quick bursts of energy when needed, faster than what batteries can provide. And they also stabilize electrical field by smoothing out voltage fluctuation. Most importantly, a real life application is camera flashes, is that sometimes you do have to wait for a bit when you flash the light, and that's capacitors in action. Now let's look into the specification of how it looks like. So in a capacitor, you have two metal plates that use to store charges, and you have LEDs that connect to the circuit and dielectric material that prevent charge flow but allow an electric field to form. Which is pretty complex, but bear with me. So how a capacitor can store charges? First, this is the capacitor before connection. The plates are neutral, and you're gonna have an equal number of positive and negative charge. And when connected to a battery, the battery will pulse electrons from one plate, making it more positively charged, and the electrons accumulate on the other, making it negatively charged. Because of that, an electric field will be formed between the plates here in the center. As electrons accumulate on the negative plate, they repel any incoming electrons. And similarly for positive plates here, the lack of electrons attract more electrons from the circuit, preventing further movement of charge. And this process will continue until the voltage across this capacitor matches the supplied voltage, meaning it is fully charged. The question you have might be, why is it storing charge? And although no current is flowing here, the electric field between the plates represent stored energy. Well, if you remember what we learned in the previous video, this is exactly what we learned, right? The energy is stored when you have an electric field. So if the circuit is later disconnected from the battery, the electric field will still be. So what it means here is that we have kept charges in this capacitor. And the moment a pathway is provided, the stored energy is released as current flows back, neutralizing the charge. So you can charge it, you can also discharge it. Well, the next topic we're gonna explore is how much charge can a capacitor store? And that's the concept of capacitance. It is the charge stored per unit voltage. The amount of charge stored in one unit of voltage. And the unit of it is in farad, but real life capacitors usually have way less farad. We typically use prefixes like microfarad, nanofarad, etc. So there are a few ways to store more charge. First, using the home formula, we can see that increasing V voltage increases Q charge. And if the voltage is too high, then it might cause short circuit. So every capacitor, they has their own maximum voltage reading. So this is usually given here. And if you were to use a real life capacitor, you can check it out. So to charge a capacitor, work must be done to move electrons. So these electrons are moved into the negative plate. And then the more charges accumulates, the stronger the repulsion, making it harder to push more electrons onto the plate. In other words, as the capacitor approaches full charge, more work is required to add more charge. So here we have a voltage ch charge. You can see that as charges increases, voltage also increases. The gradient of it is 1 over C. What it means is that for a larger capacitance, there will be less voltage increase for a given charge. It increases much slower. So how do we figure out the amount of energy stored in the capacitor? In chapter 9, this is the formula we learn. Work done. Voltage is how much work done is required to move one column of charge. So we have work done equal to VQ here. From the graph, you can see that the work done is equal to 1 over 2 V. So we can substitute the capacitance formula that we learned previously into this formula. And we will have gotten work done equal to first equation, half CV square. Second equation, work done equal to half Q square over C. These three equations allow us to calculate the energy stored in a capacitor. So what they show is that the higher the voltage, for example, the higher the energy stored, and the higher the charge, the higher the energy stored as well. So let's try to solve a work example. So I have this 100 microfarad capacitor charged to voltage of 12 volt. Calculate the charge stored. So I could use the formula given charge equal to C times V multiplied together. I got the call multiplied together. I got the second question is calculate the energy stored in the capacitor. So again, I could use the formula given 
w equal to half cv square and substitute all the answers inside and you have gotten the value well another example now we have a different quantity given capacitance is given charge is given calculate the energy stored so we can use another formula that has q and c in the equation multiply them together and get the energy in joule in the next part of the video we're now going to look into what happens when capacitors are combined so in a parallel circuit the total capacitance is the sum of individual capacitance so it's very easy you just add them up so a parallel arrangement behaves like a single larger capacitor and voltage across all capacitors are the same so to derive the formula this is the capacitance formula so we know that voltage will stay the same and we know that the total charge is the sum of individual charge so if you were to substitute q equal to cv into this equation you will add them up because of v here is the constant because they are arranged in parallel you can factorize it and you would have seen that c total is equal to c1 plus c2 very easy what is slightly complicated is when capacitors are arranged in series when they are arranged in series the charge on each capacitor will be the same because they are connected one after another and the total voltage is shed across the capacitor so let's go back to the formula again the capacitance formula now let's make v the subject and because v is shed v total will be equal to v1 plus v2 and you just substitute the equation into it and q is the same and because of that you would have seen that c total is equal to 1 over c1 and plus 1 over c2 having derived the formula for capacitors arranged in series and parallel you will see that it's exactly the opposite of how we calculate resistance when resistors are arranged in either parallel or series so when calculating combined resistance this is actually the formula for a series in resistance whereas the formula become like that when it's arranged in parallel so to help you remember better just remember it is always the opposite of how you calculate resistance in a circuit now without further ado let's try to solve some work example i have two capacitors arranged in parallel connected to 12 volt and they asked me to find out what's the total capacitance and the total charge stored so to find out the total capacitance since they're arranged in parallel just add them up remember it is the opposite of how you calculate resistance so don't make the mistake total charge so just use the same formula again because you have figured out a combined capacitance just substitute into the equation and you have gotten the total charge now as for the second world example you have two capacitors but now they are arranged in series instead so we can just use the formula substitute the value and would have gotten the amount of capacitance by the way you can see that when two capacitors are arranged in series the total capacitance is less than either one of them that's one characteristic of capacitors arranged in series right next there are a few ways capacitor can arrange not just in series and parallel it can be series plus parallel and so this is full parallel full series this is series plus parallel plus series so let's try to solve each of them assuming that they all have a value of 120 microfarad if they are all arranged in parallel we can just add them up so we have 360 microfarad and if they are arranged in series again use the formula they have 40 microfarad you can see 40 is less than individual capacitance now this case is a little bit different you have two c1 and c2 arranged in series c and the pair of this arranged in parallel in conjunction with c3 so what i would do is that i will calculate the capacitance here first using the formula which is 60 microfarad and then add them up with 120 because they are in parallel i can just sum them up which will give me 180 microfarad and ne the next question we have c1 and c2 arranged in parallel so again i could just add them up first before adding it in series with another component which will give me 80 microfarad so these are just the four ways capacitors can be arranged now moving on to charge redistribution if a charge capacitor is connected to an uncharged capacitors what happens to the charge and stored energy so the concept is that when capacitors are connected charges redistribute based on their capacitance so it means that if c1 is charged and c2 is not and when you connect them two together some of the charges will be re redistributed to c2 and the amount which it is distributed depends on the capacitance of each capacitor so when two co capacitors are connected let's say in parallel they share the same voltage the total capacitor will be given by c1 plus c2 which is the amount of charge they can store because charge is conserved like there's no charge created or loss the charge redistribute in proportion to capacitance meaning if you have 
high capacitance, you get more charge. You have low capacitance, you get less charge. And that's how we distribution work. An analogy I can think of is you have two metal rod here, one hot and one cold. Heat will flow from the hot rod to the cold rod until both rods reach the same temperature. And throughout the process, some heat will be lost to the surrounding. And similarly, this is also how energy will be dissipated as heat when charge will distribute, meaning some energy will be lost. Well, let's have some work example to solidify our concept. And a 4 microfarad capacitor is connected to 12 volt to an uncharged 6 farad capacitor. Find the final voltage across both capacitors. And first we figure out what's the initial charge stored by the capacitor. This charge will be conserved after the new capacitor have been added. So Q initial is equal to Q total, but now the only thing that changed is the capacitance value. So we just substitute the value inside and we would have found out that the voltage has dropped to 4.8 volt. Now the second question asks us for the initial and final stored energy. As I said, energy will be lost when charge will distribute. So again, I have this formula half CV square here. The initial energy I can calculate it using 4 times 12, which is this amount of energy. And the final, because capacitance has increased and voltage has dropped, so this is the final energy. We can calculate the energy loss using initial energy minus final energy. You can see a lot of energies after the charge is redistributed. Well, that's it for charge redistribution. Now let's look into what happened when capacitor discharge. And one thing you have to know is that when they discharge, the current and voltage do not drop linearly, but follows an exponential decay, as I will show you in the graph later. So the explanation is that when the capacitor is fully charged, it holds maximum charge. When it discharge, current flows in the opposite direction. The initial discharge current is very big, but as charge decreases, the current gradually drops to zero. To show you an image, this is how it looks like. It drops exponentially, not just the charge, but also the voltage and current. The reason of that is because as charge leaves the capacitor, the potential difference across it decreases. And it's like a chain effect. Since current equal to rate of charge flow, a lower voltage means less current slowing down the discharge. So the, therefore the pattern will be initially a lot of discharge and then a gradual slow decrease to zero. And this is the exponential decay formula. There are three formulas here. The only things that are different is I is for current. Q is for charge, V is for voltage. So let's explain what are the quantities here. T stands for time elapsed, and C is the capacitance. And RC is what we call the time constant. It is the time for values to drop to 37% to their initial value. I'm going to show you how to use the formula in a bit. But before that, let's dive deeper into this RC here. What this equation shows us is that the larger the resistance, the slower the discharge because current can flow slower, right? Similarly, the larger the capacitance, again, the slower the discharge. The reason is because there is more charge stored and therefore it takes longer to empty. If RC is very small, it means there, there is a faster discharge. Now let's try to solve some question. I have 1000 microfarad capacitor connected to 10K ohm resistor. Calculate the time constant. So I can just times R, I can just use R times C, which will give me the amount in second because that's the amount of time for the charge to drop to 37%. Next question, find the voltage across the capacitor after five seconds if it was initially 10 volt. Again, I could use the formula here. 10 is the initial voltage. EXP, five over 10 is the value of RC here, which is what we calculated. And this is the amount of voltage after five seconds. Thank you so much for watching. That's the end of the video. I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.